Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Is Sorry, one more time. Christ is risen. Um, one blessed Father's Day for everyone. This um, today's passage is all about. The love of the Father. Actually, um, in the Catholic epistles, says, Glory to God the Father, who has given us his Son and victory in his Son. And I'll read the exact verse, but one of the most important themes of the entire series of the resurrection is King of Peace. In the Holy 50 Days, every Gospel Sunday, we typically highlight a specific statement by Christ to remind us of a specific truth, remind us of the reality of the resurrection and what that would mean for all of us. Now in Christ, in this gospel, in the book of John, he tells us, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Was this after the resurrection or before the resurrection? Who can tell me? Was this before the resurrection or after? Any good guesses? It was before. It was actually right before the Garden of Gethsemane. And he's already telling them, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And he tells them, in the world you will have tribulations, but in me you will have peace. Wow. How can someone, moments of way, of walking into the eye of the storm, facing probably the most excruciating season of anybody's life, the scandal of the cross, public humiliation, being mocked, being scourged, being spat at, say, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And guess what? In me, you will have peace. Does that make any sense? It doesn't. It doesn't make sense logically. And really, aside from the resurrection, and if it wasn't for the resurrection, it wouldn't make sense. And there are so many moments in our lives where if it isn't for the resurrection, this wouldn't make sense. It really wouldn't make sense. You know, he's basically telling them, you're going to be scattered. You will leave me alone. But I'm not alone because the Father is with me. And I can assure you, you will have tribulations, but rejoice. I've overcome them, and I have conquered them all. No one can really undermine the reality of the crucifixion and the suffering of Jesus Christ. That would be a major heresy. If we ever say it wasn't as bad, that would be, that would be a heresy. We would deny the actual humanity of Jesus Christ if we say that what he went through on the cross was something mm, palatable, doable. But if we deny the victory of the resurrection as well, the glory, the inheritance that we have in him, the joy that he promises us, that's also a heresy. And the problem is in our lives, we go through seasons where the pains that we're undergoing and the hardships and the tribulations eclipse the reality of the resurrection. Where in the middle of the storms, as we are just holding on to the risen Lord and we're about to walk on water with him, a wave comes and we take a look at the wave and it could be a setback at work, medical issues, family disasters, whatever it is, and we lose sight of holding on to the risen Lord, in Him we have peace, and we are minutes and moments away from being able to walk on water with Him. You know, there are people that we meet that go through the same exact terrible seasons that we go through sometimes, but we truly see the resurrection in their life. 
we truly see the resurrection in their life. The, one of my father's uh, of, uh, intercessions, Abuna Bishoy Kamil, towards the end of his life, he had cancer, and his cancer metastasized to the point where it impacted most of his body. And he needed to be hospitalized. And he was in excruciating pain. And this was early on, I believe, in the 70s. And so pain management wasn't the best. Chemotherapy wasn't the best. It was a very, very, very crucial experience for him. But somehow, he turned that entire hospital floor into joy. Doctors, other patients, patients that were going through less issues and less medical pains would go and flock to his room to find peace and joy. Why? Can we belittle the reality of his suffering? Can we say he didn't go through so much pain? No. But we can't also belittle the reality if, of his Lord and Savior rising from the dead and giving him unshakable joy, giving him peace that doesn't make sense, that surpasses all understanding. And that's the reality that we have in Jesus Christ. In the Pauline, it tells us we have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the Catholic epistle, it says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is uncorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. The question is, do we live the reality of that resurrection? Or do we go one way from the other, getting smacked left and right, unfortunately, like a little kid who is approaching his dad just to learn how to swim, and he sees the waves coming in on shore and just decides to walk away, and he gets smacked. Now we have to, in him, find peace. And in those seasons, and in those troubling times, we have to realize that actually the victory of the resurrection swallowed up death. Swallowed up death. Our moments of trials, as St. Paul says, are nothing, nothing in comparison to the joy and the inheritance that the Lord Jesus Christ has granted us in Him and allowed for us to return to the bosom of the Father by the Holy Spirit. It's a joy and an inheritance sometimes that we unfortunately don't get a taste of. If we are truly a resurrected church, we will transform our communities into communities and cities of hope, regardless of what the circumstances are. When we say Christos Anisti, we're not really saying, good job, Jesus Christ, you've resurrected. We're saying Christos Anisti, Thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for allowing us to inherit your resurrection and to participate in your joy. And so it's a joyous exchange. It's a joy that we have inheritance in. Even, even though in the midst of our trials and tribulations, it still remains standing. It can never be taken away from us. But however, we might not be able to live in it if we walk away. Everything is in Him. In Him, we have peace. So when the wave is rushing in, one of the fathers once told me that the best way through, to go through the waves, high waves and storms of our lives is to go under, is to go under. I, I take that and I translate it into going into Him, going into Christ. In moments that don't make any sense, we really, really need to raise the volume of the joy and the resurrection in our lives. So that joy and that resurrection eclipses everything else. We've all been around people who live the resurrection, live the joy of the resurrection, and for them, it's just as real as everything else that they go through in their life. And glory be to God forever. Amen.